Well, welcome to Tea Time. That's right. Miss Liz is back. And I have a three-time returning guest sitting in the studio in the back. And we're going to have a good old conversation today. Today's tea is teaching impact with art and advocacy work and a lot of incredible stuff and awareness on adult late diagnosis with autism. So we're going to talk about all of that good stuff. But before we get started with all of that, we're going to get you over to Miss Liz's YouTube channel. We're going to get you to ring that little doorbell and you can subscribe to Miss Liz's YouTube channel and you'll be notified for all these tea times. You can listen to these tea times during a live stream or in the morning, afternoon, evening, in your home, in your car, at an event, all of that good stuff. What does Ms. Liz offer you? Well, I offer you over 300 plus interviews with different guests from around the globe with over 105 different topics. So there's a lot of different stuff out there. What we serve is we don't serve a beverage. We serve storytelling and words. So check that out. Check out all these incredible teas and you'll see each story is a different flavor and a blend in a different way. So let's get the disclaimer going. Let's get a little bit on Ayana and and then we're going to get her in here and we're going to have some tea together. So disclaimer for Miss Liz's Tea Time Live show. Miss Liz, myself, is going live using StreamYard. Before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com. Please be advised that the content brought forward for any Tea Time show hosted by myself, Miss Liz, is always brought forward in good faith. However, it may bring forth dialogues and opinions that are not representative of my platform. The facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the giving time of airing. All tea time guests and audience participants are responsible for using their good judgment in taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward may include discussions for some where they may be emotionally at risk. It is significant to know that the show is engaging in discussion forums only to offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutical advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Ms. Liz, through my email at bookingmissliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in today's show in any aspect, I myself, Miss Liz, welcomes you. And should you decide that the show is not made for you at this time, I respect your wishes and will see you at a later show at a later date and time. And again, all regular tea time shows are done on Thursday, 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you see a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's a special surprise or a rescheduled tea time. So now a little bit about my guest. Well, I reached out to Yena this time for her to return because I miss her. And every time she comes, we always have a good conversation. So Yena Davis, AKA phenomenal artistic is on the autism spectrum and celebrates the incredible journeys of those living with autism. Yena is an inspiring autism advocate born and raised in Westchester County, New York, despite facing over 300 seizures and living with chronic illnesses and three aut automatum autoimmune diseases she's passionately spreads messages of self-love equ equality equality diversity inclusion and autism awareness through the arts she's an autism advocate children's book illustrator of 16 books today check out her latest millennium available on amazon but i believe she has a new book we're going to talk about that new book uh, creator of four coloring books for girls of color designed for events like harlan week w BM, WBL's Circles of Sisters, and more. She's a theater child with a love for all performing arts, honored at the United Nations and proclaimed April 26th as a Yana's Day in Westchester County, New York. Former choreographic with work featured on BET, ABC, Family, and the Apollo Th Theater. Let me get her in here and let's spill some tea. Welcome, Ayana. Hello. Am I saying it right, Ayana? Ayana? Uh, no, it's Ayana. <laughs> I, I and then, and I just asked you before we went live, and I was just like, "Here we go, Miss Liz." 
and short spam. So welcome back. It's an honor to have you here. Thanks for having me, Beth. Uh, so let's get back into uh, a conversation in case somebody hasn't seen season three and season four with you. Uh, tell me who you were as a little girl and who you are now as a program. Okay. Um, well, I'm Ayana and I am an autism advocate and artist. Um, I advocate for black autistic women and um, I mainly focus on um, late diagnosed autistics and I speak about how um, Black autistics are either late diagnosed, never diagnosed, or misdiagnosed. Um, I illustrate children's books. I have illustrated 31 children's books to date. Um, my latest children's book is called I'm Autistic and I'm Phenomenal. And it is a children's book seen through the eyes of a little Black autistic girl. Um, I design jewelry, um, I do theater, I did theater as a child, um, I'm a former choreographer, um, so I'm just into anything dealing with the arts. So let's talk a little bit about that book, because that book looks amazing, right? You can see the image, and for the people that are watching the video, you can see her holding this incredible book. So how long did it take you to write that book? Um, it took a while because I kept changing it. So I actually started the concept for it in like 2020. And it didn't come out until 2023, I believe. Um, but I kept changing it. I changed the cover. Um, I changed the storyline sort of. Um, because I was, you know, as I was advocating, I was learning more about autism, you know, being late diagnosed. I was learning as I went along. Um, the first cover that I designed for the book, um, it did have the puzzle piece on it, and we know there's controversy um, behind the puzzle piece. So once I became more educated about that, I decided to remove the puzzle piece from the cover, and I designed it. I designed a whole new cover for it. So, you know, that took me some time um, to decide how I wanted to make the new cover. Um, the illustrations inside, it don't necessarily take me long to do them, but it's more about like the concept and how I want to do them and how I want them to like jump out of the page and resonate with the audience and how I want the audience to understand the way we see life, the way we interpret things, the way things look to us. And just knowing that like, we don't see the world the way other people see the world. And that's what I want people to see and take from the book. I wanted to point out that, yes, you know, we have our bad days and every day is not rainbows and sunflowers and roses, but there, there's also good. There's a lot of good, you know, we're not, we're not all nightmares. It's not always a nightmare. So I also wanted to point out the good and the joys and the sunshine. So that was like what I wanted to also focus on. Could you tell me a little bit about the puzzle piece? Um, sure. The puzzle piece, um, it was basically saying, like, you're missing pieces. So that's where the controversy came in. Um, so I just didn't really appreciate somebody saying, like, you're, you're, a mi you're missing pieces. That's why you're autistic. It's kind of like saying somebody has, like, a loose screw, you know, when they call somebody... <laughs> mentally ill and they're like oh you got some loose screws so like you're, you're missing pieces you're, you're you're where's the missing piece like yeah. we are complete we're different but we are complete we don't have any missing pieces so that was the controversy with the puzzle piece um there there's a great article um somebody wrote for the mighty called the problem with the puzzle piece if you google it you can find that article and it'll go more in depth about the problem with the puzzle piece for representing autism so um i didn't want anything to do with that <laughs> yeah well it, it is right like it's like saying you're a loose screw like you know yeah and i always like this because we always have an open heart conversation you and me right and we we get it out there that we are special we are unique in our own way that doesn't mean that there's something missing with us we're just made a different way right yeah um, and it's oh. also it's it's also very offensive because and it, it's kind of manipulating too because you know they have this symbol that is represents 
is supposed to represent autistic children and autistic individuals. And, you know, they make t-shirts with the autism puzzle piece. So then like families are buying this and families are wearing these t-shirts. And, you know, a lot of them don't know the meaning behind it. So there's where they're wearing these t-shirts and they have their kids in these t-shirts just walking around with these t-shirts that mean I'm a missing piece. I've got missing pieces. So, you know, they, they represent, they have it and they kind of present it like it's something good. And, and, and it's not, it's, it's very insulting. So there, there are a lot of problems with the puzzle piece. Yeah. And we talked about this on season four, right? All these campaigns and stuff that are out there, right? Like, yes. the, mm-hmm. you know, we have these campaigns for one day, but then the rest of the year we're forgotten, right? We, we yes. don't talk about it. And mm-hmm. you and me, we both feel in, it's an insult for somebody who's living with stuff. You know, yeah, that's like, we can only speak about it on this day, but we can't speak about it on that day, right? Yeah, like autism, of course we are grateful for Autism Acceptance Month. It used to be called Autism Awareness Month, but now it's Autism Acceptance Month. Yes, great, wonderful, we love it. But when the month of April is over, we don't snap at it being autistic, you know, when May arrives, we're autistic all year long. 24 hours a day, every minute of the day, every second. So, you know, just for people to only focus on it once one month out of the year and then kind of like forget about us for the rest of the year. It's kind of a weird thing because, you know, we're like, hey, we're still here. So, you know, it, it would be nice for the conversation to keep going and for it to be more normalized to to speak about autism because um you know, the stigmas that are just put on autism, like, it, yes, it is a very sensitive topic, but you still have to get the conversation going. And none of the stigmas will be removed until you get the conversation going. Um, a lot of conversations are hard to have, but they are still conversations that need to be had. Yeah, and that's something that we both agree on is conversation needs to keep going, right? We need to keep that flow going. And that's what Tea Time is all about is keeping the flow moving, right? Keeping it moving, uh, you know, and that's why you don't just reach out to a guest when it's that month to celebrate on that campaign. I, I like to throw throw people in all time of the year, right? It's not just when it's okay, well, this is autism month, so I have to get all autism guests. I have to get all mental health guests. I have to get all uh survivor guess you know we have to mix it up and really just keep that conversation flowing um you know i want to talk about when you were on on season four we talked about this on on the creativity of autism children but also the autism the uh, autistic creation of an adult like because you were diagnosed at a late age right I was, yes, I was diagnosed as an adult, which is, you know, a late diagnosis, anything really after, um, you know, the average age for diagnosis is about 18 months old. So being diagnosed Mm -hmm. as an adult is considered late diagnosis. So I was diagnosed as an adult. How old were you when you were diagnosed? Uh, That's a question for dad, but I was, (laughs) you know, I'm a millennial, so it was about it was about almost 10 years ago. So I was, you know, you know, I was up there. Yeah. So you were an adult. Yes. Now, do you find that there's enough awareness and advocacy for adult uh, individuals living with autism? Um, It's getting better. I don't feel like, I, I feel like we always have to start the conversation. And if we don't start the conversation ourselves, then there's really no, no talk about it. There's really no conversations about it being had. Um, sometimes if they do speak about autism, they give given misinformation and then we always have to step in and correct them. So it's, it's always like if we don't start the conversation, the conversations don't get started. Um, so I don't feel there's enough talk about it. It's like, okay, when April comes, that's when the conversation starts. But again, when April at the end of April, the conversations fizzle out, the conversations go away. And it's, and it's just like, we, we can't only speak about autism in April because we are autistic all the time. You're autistic from the time you're born until the time you go into the dirt. So we can't only speak about it in April. Yeah. And it, it, it's sad that it has to be that your guys are you that you have to start the conversation, right? 
um, instead of somebody coming up and saying, hey, do you want to tell me a little bit about yourself? Like, uh, how you doing today? Like, just an open conversation to get it going because you're an individual. You're a person too, right? You have feelings. You, 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 you know, and people seem to forget that because of the diagnosis. They look at the diagnosis instead of the person. Yeah. And also, like, if, if there is a conversation going about autism, most of the time it's something negative. Um, it's it's never really anything positive. It's usually something negative, maybe something they hear in the news about, um, like, an autistic child being, like, abused by a teacher. But it's, it's never really anything good. So it's the conversations that are that have that are start about autism, it always um, stems from something negative, never anything good. It's, it's never like a, a feel good autism story. It's, it's very rare, but again, if it's a feel good autism story it's usually in the month of April. So again, I want to talk about being a black woman. Have you met other black women with autism? Um, I haven't met any black autistic women in real life, but I've met some really amazing ones online. Um, you know, when I got diagnosed, I, I got online and, um, you know, when I started getting like a following, a lot of black autistic women started following me. I followed them back. We had a lot in common. Um, and it just was like a relief to like finally connect with people who, who got it and who understood me. Um, I have tons of allies who I really appreciate um, their support and um, them having my back, but to have somebody have walked the walk and, and know exactly how you feel, it's, it's just like a, a different type of um, feeling. So um, I've, I've met a lot of amazing Black autistic women online. Now, do you find that the the women are afraid of speaking and coming forward, or? Um, I I don't feel that they are afraid of speaking, but you know sometimes there are a lot of ignorant people online, and you don't always want to deal with that. You know, sometimes you just want to you want to come online, you want to speak about your experience without getting attacked, and there are a lot of ignorant people who will attack you. Um, I wrote an article, I think it came out in either 2021 or 2022, about Black autistic women being included in conversation about autism. And there were so many trolls, DMs on Instagram and TikTok, just, it was mostly white, neurotypical men. They weren't even autistic, but they had so much to say about it. Not everybody wants to deal with that. So it wasn't that they didn't want to speak up, but not everybody wants to deal with that. Some people just want to live their life, be happy, Black, and autistic, and not have to deal with that. But there are so many who speak up. I know so many Black autistic women who advocate. They're all amazing. Um, we all advocate in our own way. We basically all fight for the same issues, but we do it in our own way and they're all amazing. Yeah. Well, you do through, through arts, like you create some really amazing stuff, like your clothing design, earrings, uh, and, and designer bags that we're going to talk about a little bit more in a few minutes. But I mean, like you really put the arts in there, right? And we talked about this before we went live, right? When people don't understand us, we turn to the arts. So, um, let's talk a little bit about your artwork. Sure. Um, I started drawing and painting and doing theater and dance and all those wonderful things. Um, when I was a very young child, um, obviously, if you follow my story, you know that I was undiagnosed as a child, but there was always questions of people asking, well, she's different. Why is she like that? So it was very obvious that I was different, but I always was in some type of art program. I always draw, I always drew. I would take my art supplies and go find somewhere to draw where nobody was bothering me. Um, I was, I did school plays when I was a teenager. I was part of a theater company, a dance company. So I was always into some type of art and that's where I felt safe. I didn't feel safe in school. I didn't feel safe anywhere else. I only felt safe when I had art. So I feel like I couldn't have gotten as far in life and I couldn't, I wouldn't be here speaking about it if I didn't have art because that was my safe space. That's still my safe space. 
when you don't really, you know, fit in with people, fit in anywhere else, you don't, there's, there's no wrong in art. You can do it however you want. Nobody can tell you this is right. This is wrong. Don't do it like that because it's something that you're creating and nobody can tell you how to create things. So that, that's still my safe space. So that's where I go when, you know, you need a little bit of like an escape or comfort. So that's, that's why I, um, I know that like, I choose to um, just do any type of artistry to, to keep myself going. Let's talk about those earrings because I've seen some amazing earrings that you've done. And I'm just like, whoa, you've done that. You put two, two pairs of earrings together or three pairs of earrings and you've taken them apart and recreated them. Like some of your earrings are like, a, I'm just like, wow, that's an earring. So what, it, what has it been always about the earrings? Uh, well, I love earrings. Everybody that knows that knows that I have like a really big earring collection. Um, I, yeah, I like, sometimes I just buy earrings and I take them apart and I put them back together how I want. Sometimes I start from scratch and um, make earrings from scratch. The bigger, the better. Today, I don't really have, I just have hoops on today, but you can't go wrong with a hoop. <laughs> um, sometimes I turn my artwork into earrings and I'll just like hook them to the hoop. So it'll be like, artwork on my hoops and um people started asking for them so I I make them for people like by request just like the handbags I make those by request and um it's just just another another outlet for me to get my creativity out um you know because I feel like you can never do too much creatively yeah so now let's talk a little bit about these handbags because you have a special project that you're working on uh, that we want to bring big attention to. So for all the listeners out there, I want you to really pay attention to what she's going to speak about next, because I believe we need this awareness out there big time. So Yana, you want to tell us a little bit about what these handbags are going to do and how you're creating them and who you're creating them for? Uh, yes, I, um, right now I'm designing and will eventually donate. Um, I, I've designed about 12 different designs um, and they'll be produced more than one of each design um, for foster kids because I read an article and I saw that sometimes, you know, when they're being moved from home to home, sometimes they just have to get up and go and they have to transport their belongings in trash bags. And when I read the article, I just couldn't stop thinking about it. And it was really bothering me. And, you know, a lot of autistic people, we have this thing where we can't stop thinking about things and we, we just think about the same thing over and over and over again. So like, it, it was just really, and it was just really bothering me. So I'm just like, okay, well, you can just let this continue to bother you or you can do something about it. So that's what I decided to do. Um, a, a friend of mine is a, um, a spokesperson for um, foster children and she's going to help me with the project. So I'm going to design a few more bags and then we're just going to push forward. And I just can't wait to get the ball rolling. I don't feel like anybody deserves to be treated that way. Um, they're not trash. So why do you have to move your belongings somewhere in a trash bag? Um, you know, they're people too, just as important as the next person. So um, this is something that I'm really looking forward to, and um, I want to do it for as long as I can. Well, I think it's really deeply important, and I'm so happy that you're doing this because a lot of people are unaware of this, that when foster children are moved, that their their belongings are put into a trash bag. And the message that you're giving a child is that they're trash, that they're no good. And then you tell them to believe in themselves. Well, if you believed in the child, you wouldn't be putting it into a trash. You would have a suitcase. You would have a bag. You would have, you know, something there for a child. Uh, and it does make a huge impact in a child's life. I know for myself, I was a foster child and I was moved with a trash bag. Um, my kids are also put into foster care for uh, personal reasons. And they were moved with bags. And the garbage bag does trigger a foster child for years and impacts their lives for years. So thank you so much for creating this and bringing that awareness to the table. I can't wait to see what those bags are going to look like because I've seen your earrings. I've seen your books and, and I seen that you had given a woman a bag, a designer bag 
in a shop or something. I seen a video. It was either in a shop or a birthday gift or something. And she was just blown away by the design that you did. I think it was like a year ago. Um, just before you came on uh, tea time, you had given her. Oh, her that was, um, that was the vegan, um, I don't even know what to call her now because she's like a big mogul. That was Tabitha Brown, the vegan. I, I don't want to call her a TikToker because now she's like this amazing businesswoman. But I went to her book signing and I actually designed a purse and earrings for her. So I That's gifted what it was. Yeah. Her. Yes, I gifted them to her at her book signing. It was pretty cool. Yeah. See, I do follow the guests and I, I, I follow you guys so much that I'm just like, hey, was it this? Was it that? Like before we went live, I said, was it bracelets or earrings? Because I couldn't remember because I know I have some guests that do bracelets, some that do earrings. And then I was like, no, as soon as you said earrings, I was like, yes, it was. Because I remember the last time you were on Tea Time, the earrings you had on were amazing. Like, yeah, they were really huge. Yeah, I still yeah, have those. Really those big. are like one of my favorite pair. And because sometimes I, I'm guilty of like losing earrings, but I still have both, both of those. So, and you also design wardrobe as well, because I've seen some of your outfits that you've created, uh, yeah. you know, with jeans and stuff like that. You add some little character to them, like, like style, right? You're coming into the room, like I'm here, like, look at <laughs> So, you know, being on tea time three times, what do you enjoy the most? Um, I like to come here and have open conversations with you about mental health, about um, raising awareness to issues that are important that society needs to hear about, um, that maybe people might not think that they needed to learn about, but they get to come here and learn about it. And um, just have a great open educational conversation. Now I want to go, I want to take you down a different path. We're going to go down a rabbit hole now. We're going to do colors. Uh, your favorite colors are pink and purple. Yes. Why those two, why those two colors? Um, well, purple because like it represents royalty and it's a very okay. spiritual color and I'm very spiritual. Um, it, it's like the amethyst color and amethyst is like my favorite crystal. Um, it like gives you like protection and all of that. So that's, that's why I like purple. Um, pink is a very girly color and I'm very girly. Um, like I love wearing pink. Obviously I have on pink today. Um, and I just like pink because it's pretty and it's girly and you just look nice in pink. I don't really have like a deep meaning for why I like pink. Those are just my two favorite colors. Well, you know, when you say pink, it's like a cheerful color, right? It's like, yeah, you like can't see pink with, like, with a sad face, right? Really, like you can't. Yeah. <laughs> Try and say pink with a sad face. No, all I the can't. listeners out there, like, I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to test you guys. Like, can, try and say it without a, with a groomy face pink. Uh, I can't see. I got a smile. It's a, it's a smiley color. It just lightens up the room. Now, if you, if you could change anything about today's world with autism, what would you change? I would change the way that people see autistic people. I would change the way people judge you before they get to know you as a person. They see you and they know that you're autistic and they judge you by your diagnosis. They don't get to know you as a person. They hear that you're autistic and that's what they judge you by. They judge you because you're autistic and they don't really give you a chance to learn about you as a person and to learn about the type of person you are, you know, your character, um, you know, your morals, the things you believe in. It's just like, okay, well, they're autistic, you know, they're weird and no, I would change the fact, like, get to know us, stop judging us, stop, you know, going by the stigmas that society has put on autism and be a little bit more open-minded. So let's talk a little bit. Uh, we have a couple questions here that I want to ask you that uh, are coming in. Uh, somebody asked you about your seizures. Do you still have seizures? Well, I actually hit my two-year seizure-free mark a couple months ago. I need to post my my photos for that. I just haven't been on social media as much. But yeah, I hit my two year seizure free mark. Um, we just had to do like some like medication adjustments. And it, it was just like trial and error with medications and, you know, um, a new neurologist and, you know, things of that nature. So I'm doing really good. 
And diversity inclusion, when you hear those two words, what comes to mind? Diversity and inclusion. Um, not leaving anybody out, including everybody, you know, just, just because somebody's different, it doesn't mean that you have to throw them to the side and throw them to the trash. It means if somebody's different, you should want to learn who they are. You should want to include them because you can learn something from everybody and you should want to learn about the differences that people have. And because like I said, you can learn something from everybody. And uh, someone's asking what the name of your coloring books are. Oh, there are so many. Um, one is called um, um, ABCs and Afro Puffs. One is called We Are Still Magical. Um, one is called We Are Magical. Um, oh, there are so many, but those are the three newest ones. There, there are so many. So do you have any plans to make any more coloring books? Uh, yes, I do. Um, I took a year off this year. I didn't put any books out. Um, so next year I plan to put out more children's books and more coloring books. This year I was mainly doing illustrations for other authors. So I didn't work on like my own projects, but I've been illustrating for other authors. And another question we have for you, are you still working with United Nations? Um, I actually only worked with them when I got like honored by the organization at the United Nations. So that was the only time that I ever worked with them. So. So they haven't reached out to you for any more uh, advocacy or anything? No, it was, I actually got honored for the community work that I did. It wasn't, it, this was before I started advocating. This is when I was, I had a dance program for um, girls in an underserved community. So that was what I got honored for. Now, do you speak at any events? Um, I actually, I, I do a lot of Zoom speaking engagements. I actually have one this coming Sunday and it's UK based. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, I haven't done, I, I think I've done maybe one in person, um, but I'm looking forward to doing more in the new year. Like I said, right now, I'm just kind of like fizzling out for the holiday season and getting ready for the new year, planning out the new year and things of that nature. Now, I want to I'm going to give you some words and I want you to tell me what you think of these words. Teaching. Teaching. Um, patience, understanding, enlightenment. Impact impact um making a difference changing somebody's life learning new things art oh everything life art is life um saving someone's life changing someone's life giving life to things advocacy advocacy um, bringing awareness to the world, bringing information to those who may not have gotten it from anybody else, um, trying to make a change, trying to make things better, trying to make things easier, trying to take the load off of those who maybe don't have a voice, but they want somebody to be their voice. Creator. Peter, um, change maker, risk taker, performance, courage. And the reason that I'm doing this is because I want my listeners to understand that when we throw words out there, we can think of positive things, right? We can think of good things. And that's what you just did is you gave me all positive stuff, right? You didn't give me any negative. You gave me all positive. And that's how simple it is when we put words out there, when we put stories out there, when we have the conversations, we can have those positive outlooks and changes. And I love that you said change maker because that's exactly who you are. You're a change maker in my eyes. Um, and I'm really blessed to have you come into my life and share your story and get it out there. Um, I want to, want to go into when you were a little girl, 
and you you uh, you got a lot of uh, a lot of uh, misunderstanding because people thought like you were like this bad kid, always in trouble, you know, hard to understand. So as a little girl, what would you say to the little girl today? Um, I would tell her that you are not bad. You are just different and that you may not understand today or tomorrow, but one day you'll understand. One day it'll all make sense. So, Yena, you live with chronic illnesses. So do you want to speak a little bit about those? that you live with as, um, with as well? Yes, I have five autoimmune diseases. Um, you know, you have your good and bad days. You have your ups and downs, but there's more ups than downs. Um, I try to not focus so much on the negative because, um, you know, I don't want, like, I, I speak very transparent about it on my page and everything. I don't get into you know every detail and tell all my business but I'm, I'm pretty transparent i share things um i speak about like my medications when i'm trying to get my medications changed and my doctor's appointments when i'm having problems with my doctors but um i, I don't want to like let it totally control me even though some days it does control me and i can't really do much but i don't want it to control me and i don't want to rest in it you know, I, I don't want it to be like all all that I am. And I don't want like when people come to my page, I don't want my page to be like gloom and doom. And I don't want people to get sad when they come to my page. You know, I choose to share because other people might go through things and we might relate. Maybe I can help somebody. Maybe they can help me. So um, but things are way better now, you know. People might look at me. Sometimes I see, I hear, you don't look sick. But there was a time when you could look at me and you could tell that something was going on. So I'm doing a lot better now than I was seven years ago, eight years ago. I'm doing better than I was two years ago. And that's what I, that's what I really enjoyed about your page, especially on TikTok, right? I like checking out your little videos and stuff like that. And it's always encouraging, you know, but you also have a straightforward voice as well for not like you have no no tolerance for nonsense like you're like you know this is ridiculous like you're taking a post down you've done this you've done you know and I want to talk about that social media taking down awareness post and education posts how do you feel about that um you mean like when I post about awareness yeah um I well I choose to post about my advocacy and my um, you know, I, I choose to speak about these things because, um, this is what I do. So, um, you, you have to speak up if you want to see change, you know, just sitting around wanting change, nothing is going to happen. You have to take action and you have to speak out. Um, I'm meeting a lot of people, um, who have like the same goals, who want to see the same things that I want to see. I learn a lot from them. They learn a lot from me. I meet a lot of parents who um, are the parents of autistic children and we have great conversations. You know, they tell me that um, you, that they, they understand their child better. Can they learn a lot from my page? So if, if only one person can learn something from my page, I know that I'm doing something right. Now, you know, you've done a lot of articles for different magazines and and uh, books out there. Uh, have you co-authored in any anthology books? When I was, I did a poetry book a really long time ago, and I don't remember the name of it, but <laughs> it's really terrible. But as far as like other, like current and recent, no, I haven't. I've only like... Um, collaborated as an illustrator now do you have any any uh any plans of doing any future podcasts or any um shows or anything like that out there um well we don't well at for this year i don't have too many because i've slowed down um doing the podcasts one, I, I needed a break. <laughs> you know, we all need a break sometimes to kind of reset and recharge. 
Um, you know, we spoke about this. The podcast circuit is changing. Um, I don't want to give too much attention to um, people who, you know, I feel like they might be mocking people with disabilities, people who are different. Um, you know, I don't want to support somebody's platform who may be um, doing those things, you know, the mocking and the making fun of, um, you know, people with disabilities and people who are different. So I've, I've slowed down a lot doing that. Um, I've become more selective. So f like for right now, I I've slowed down and, you know, of course, you know, my dad will ask me if I want to do a show and um, we've just become more selective. Yeah. So let's talk about your dad. Your dad is like your best friend, right? So yes, absolutely. Like, <laughs> if anybody wants to reach out there, you have to go through her dad and her dad's incredible. So uh, let's talk about your dad and your relationship, like how it is to be that connection, like daughter and father. Um, well, he's amazing. Um, you know, I, I don't like functioning labels when it comes to autism but I am considered high functioning. However, um, there are still a lot of things that I can't do on my own, which if somebody just looked at me or kind of spoke to me, um, you probably wouldn't pick it up from speaking to me for a short amount of time. But if you're around me long enough, you'd be able to tell um, I, I can't cross the street by myself. Um, I, I can't use the stove. I can't iron my clothes. I need help with my medications. I don't drive. So like, these are all things that I need my dad's help with. Um, so he, he brings me to my doctor's appointments. Um, you know, when you go see a new specialist and you have to fill out new papers and stuff, I'm not able to do that myself. So he, he'll fill out all my paperwork and things of that nature. Um, you know, when I had my surgery, he handled all of those things for me. So he, he does like all the, cause you know, I do have developmental delays and I'm dyslexic and you know, all that great stuff. So I do need help with a lot of things. So he's just kind of there as that, you know, that extra set of hands that I need. Um, he's, he's very supportive in my advocacy. He's there to make sure no one's making me feel uncomfortable. Um, he does not play when it comes to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> but I couldn't ask for like a more supportive father. Um, when I got diagnosed, he, they, they spoke to him. They were like, well, how was she as a child? And, you know, um, did she do this? What was she like? Um, what were some of her behaviors that you noticed? Did you notice this? So um, he's been there for the like entire process. So um, I do consider myself very, very blessed. I, th I think it's really nice that your, your dad is there, right? Uh, and your dad is like your bodyguard. Like he doesn't he, play. He really is. He really is. <laughs> uh, so when you go to family events and stuff like that, is uh, is dad like the bodyguard there too? Uh, yes, he is. Uh, but I, I can actually say that like my entire family is really protective of me. But he's still the bodyguard because he knows that I get overstimulated sometimes and I can't be there that long or if somebody's in my face for too long he's like okay she's had enough <laughs> um but even when I go to theater he stays there he doesn't just drop me off and leave um even though I have a really great group of you know I'm in a really great group with a really great group of people right now so he trusts them so now he'll he'll go and he'll go outside and wait in the car but he still doesn't leave <laughs> but um he's 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 very protective and um he he doesn't play any games when it when it comes to me. Well, he's an amazing person, and I'm honored to meet yes. and, and know your dad as well, right? Uh, I've communicated back and forth with your dad, and your, your dad's like, uh, no, and and she, uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, and it's good to have good conversation, you know, as, especially working with everybody that works with you, uh, you know, because that's what it is: is building the relationship and building that community together. And I think that's what we've done in the last three years is we've really built this relationship and friendship for one another and understand each other. Uh, 
Now, if you, if you could make a cup of tea, I'm going to take you into tea land. What kind of tea would you make if you could create your own tea? I would make unicorn tea. And I knew she was going to go with the unicorn tea because we talked about unicorns in the past. And we talked about Care Bears too, I believe, at one point. Yes, too. Care Bears. I love Care Bears. <laughs> right? I'm a Care Bear person. And Care Bears are coming back. I seen them in Walmart when I went shopping the other day. I, yeah, like, oh my God, they're and I need to stop buying them, but I can't help it. They, they come out with a new one. Like every time I look up, I'm like, I need that. Yeah, Care Bears are like they need to bring Care Bears back. Like you can, you can't not smile when you say Care Bear, even yes. the grumpy Care Bear. Like he's got like too. some some Care Bear earrings too. So I'm probably gonna take them apart and put them on like some bigger earrings. So yeah, there we go. Right, Care Bear Land. Here we come. So the, back to the tea, the unicorn tea. What would yes. be in your unicorn tea? Let's see, unicorns. Little unicorn marshmallows, edible glitter, um, a pink straw, a big purple mug, um, some happiness dust, some positivity dust, and I don't know what else for now. You know, I'm really picky. <laughs> That's okay, because I believe it would be good. And you know, it's okay to have unique teas out there and create and have fun with it. You know, because that's what it's all about. Like when I serve tea, I don't serve the beverage. I serve like fun moments and special times together and, you know, some laughs and jokes and some bloopers and all of that stuff. Uh, so now we have unicorn tea and we have Care Bear. Now we're, we're, we're creating a tea party here, right? And who else would you bring to that tea party? Uh, who else would I bring to my tea party? I bring my nephew. He's three years old. Uh, he's a ton of fun. He has a friend, so I'd probably bring his friend to the tea party, too. They have great conversations that toddlers can only have. Um, I'd bring my dad, of course. And I'd bring my theater coach. Oh, well, look at that. See, it's who we put at our table and who we serve with. And I love that you picked your nephew at three years old because three years old, they're really creative. My granddaughter's three and she, boy, some of the stories she comes up with. He's hilarious. And they're so innocent and pure. They haven't been like tainted by the world and told what they shouldn't be yet. So I love that. So if you could create a story or a storyline or a dance performance of tea, how would it look? Um, It would be... Well, it wouldn't be organized because I feel like people should be able to be free. So it would be like a freestyle because you really can't tell people that they're doing something wrong when art is involved. Yeah. So it would just be very freeing and not really chaotic, but all over the place. And that's what it's all a tea party is all over the place, right? It isn't about structure. It isn't about lines. It's about getting out of the lines, you know, having that different flow, having that unicorn, having the sparkles, the glitter, all of that stuff. Uh, I want to get into a little bit of your books because you have incredible books out there as well. So let's bring some awareness to those books. So if anybody would like to find any of your books, where could they find those? Um, I Well, if you follow me on any social media platforms, um, Phenomenally Autistic Everywhere, there's a link in my bio to my link tree. And in my link tree is my Amazon author page with all of my books that I endorse there. Like you can find all of them there, books that I've done with other authors, my books, my coloring books. You can find all of them right there. Um, but my latest book, I'm Autistic and I'm Phenomenal. That's the book that I'm most proud of. Yeah, let's let's get back into that book because I, wanna, I really want to get that book out there. Like you have the colors pink and purple on that book. So it has your two favorite colors. So you're telling the readers already that these are my favorite colors, guys. Like, look, it's right on the cover. Uh, what can they find inside that book? Um, you can find... Um, just, you can just get a peek inside the mind of a little black autistic girl, 
um, of course, some of the challenges, but then also some of the, the good characteristics. Um, the book is very colorful because, um, again, I don't want no doom and gloom. I want it to be a happy place. Um, and I, I chose to specifically, and I intentionally made it about a little girl. Sometimes people are like, this is amazing. And there's one, is there one for a boy? And I'm like, no, unfortunately, this is for girls because there's not enough representation for little black autistic girls. And, you know, part of that is because um, girls have better masking skills than boys, which is also why girls of any race are diagnosed less or later or never, never at all than boys. So I just felt like um, girls needed some representation and that's why I made this intentionally for girls. But so you'll see, you know, some of the challenges, but you'll also see the joys. And um, so it takes you right through that. Like the challenges are in the beginning of the book, but then it's like at the end, it's like, okay, well, I can do this and this is why I'm phenomenal. I do this and this is why I'm phenomenal. So the end is just like in your face, I'm phenomenal, so. Now, let's talk about that word phenomenal. How old were you when you got that word phenomenal? Oh, I've loved it forever because Maya Angelou is my favorite poet. And, you know, she has that poem, Phenomenal Woman. So it's just like something that I've always been obsessed with. And when I needed to, like, make a name for, like, my advocacy page, I just, I didn't know what to do. So I was just like, okay, phenomenally autistic. And it just kind of stuck. And, um, at first I was like, I don't care what to call it. But then I was like, okay, phenomenal autistic. That sounds good to me. And people are always like, does it have anything to do with Maya Angelou? And I'm like, yes. So um, I just, <laughs> Boom, there, that works. Yes, I, I just, I, I just love the word and, and it can be used for so many different things. And I just feel like everybody is phenomenal in their own way. You don't have to be like a celebrity to be phenomenal. You can do anything and be phenomenal. You can kick a rock across the street and be phenomenal. So I just love the freaking word. I, I could see you kicking a rock and <laughs> <laughs> making a positive thing out of it, right? Yes. It's like, how far can you go? <laughs> uh, let's talk about, uh, we have a question here about masking and skimming. So what's masking and skimming? Are they the same or are they different? Um, they're, they're very different. Masking is um, when you, well, first I'll say that masking is very dangerous because okay. it can send you into a meltdown. It can send you into a shutdown. It can even send you into autistic burnout, which is very hard to get out of. But masking is when you are trying to hide or suppress your autistic traits. So people can't like pick up on them if they know what they are, but it's, it's to make, to, it's to appear more normal, whatever that is. And stimming is like releasing a lot of energy, like stimmings and ticks. Like a lot of my ticks, sometimes it just might be me tapping my finger. Um, sometimes stimming might look like you doing a dance. It's, it's really different for everybody. So you really can't put it into a character, a, a category because it, it looks different for everybody, but they, they are very different, but for everybody, it looks like something different, you know, the ticks and the stims and the masking, it, it differs from person to person. So when do those usually happen when you're overstimulated? Um, you can actually, they can happen when there's absolutely nothing wrong with you. Like I have ticks for no reason. Um, sometimes when you stim, it's just, you just might need to get rid of some extra energy that you didn't even know you needed to get rid of. Or sometimes you just do it because just for the hell of it. So it, it, sometimes it can be for no reason. Sometimes there's absolutely a reason but it is different for everybody and everybody does it for a different reason. Just like, you know, everybody has different care needs. So one person might have to do it for this reason. Another person might have to do it for this reason. Now, do you do any zoning out? Oh, yes, I, I do. Um, I have a dissociative disorder, so I disassociate a lot. Um, for me, it doesn't look like, like I don't have alters, which people may know as multiple personalities. That's not what dissociation looks like for me. Um, for me, it might be like what people might think is zoned out, 
but I go really deep into it. So I might like a really bad example of what has happened to me when I dissociate. I have like left the house with no shoes on. And then when I've like woken up from it, I'm like, how did I get out here? So <laughs> another reason why my dad is really protective because, you know, he I might wander off somewhere and I don't know where I am. I don't know who I am. I don't know what year it is. Um, I might not recognize somebody in this dissociative episode who may be a family member who I'm supposed to be um, familiar with. And it, it's very common in autistic people, but not only um, autistic people dissociate. A lot of people have dissociative episodes and dissociative disorders. So, yeah. So what other symptoms can, with uh, autism should uh, people be aware of? Oh, there are a lot of symptoms of autism. Um, some people don't have all of them. Um, you know, communication is really challenging for me. Um, eye contact is really hard. Um, sensory processing disorder. Um, you know, I'm very sensitive to light. Um, I have sensitivity to touch. Sometimes I have touch aversion. I don't want anybody touching me. Um, smell certain smells too strong can send you into a full out meltdown taste, um, texture, certain foods, very picky, only eat about five different foods. Um, there, there are so many symptoms. Well, they're really traits of yeah. autism and they're, they they're different in everybody. Some people have more than others. Some people are also like severely developmentally delayed that have autism. Some people aren't. Um, and some people have other disorders that come along with being autistic. So it, it, it's a spectrum and the spectrum is very wide. So like no two autistic people are the same. So before we wrap up, in what final message would you like to give everybody that's listening today about autism? Um, I, I would just like to say that we are human and we have feelings. So um, just back to what I was saying before, don't judge us by our diagnosis, get to know us as a person. Um, don't listen to the stigmas that the media and society has put out there about us. Um, you know, give people a chance because you might be missing out on a really awesome person just because you decided to listen to somebody that might not even know what they're talking about. So just um, be a little bit more open-minded and um, open your heart and you never know who you might meet. You might meet like your best friend and they're autistic, but you would have never known or met them if you were being closed-minded and just listening to society and letting stigmas have your mind being closed off. So, and before we wrap up, I want to just get those bags out again. So when are those bags, uh, when do you expect to have those bags out for the foster children? Um, I want to design more. So probably I want to do like maybe the first drop for the holidays, of course, and then maybe the next round in February. So I'm trying to do it every couple of months. So that's my goal. Oh, that's cool. And again, thank you for doing that. Uh, if anybody would like to know more about you, they can reach out to you through your link tree, correct? Yes. All my information is in my link tree. I'm phenomenally autistic across all social media. Well, it was really a pleasure to sit and have you for the third time. And, you know, we always have these good, incredible times. And we create these amazing tea parties and tea times together. Uh, you know, check out Care Bears. Uh, you know, if you haven't heard of a Care Bear, check out Care Bears. And if you haven't heard of Unicorn Tea, well, you want to listen to this tea time and you want to connect and, you know, uh, check out season three, season four, and season five. Ayana has been on all three and we've gotten to some really good conversations during those times. So again, thank you so much for joining me and being a guest and coming thank back and, and, and getting to know your father a little bit more. It, it's been a real pleasure to get to know your family. So thank you so much for that. Thank you. Uh, for all the for all the listeners out there, I will be back tomorrow on Thursday with a uh, couple's return. We have two incredible couples coming back. And then uh, in the evening, we have a thriller, uh, um, thriller screenwriter, author coming on. So be sure to check that out. And on 
on October 24th, you will see the press release for the November lineup. And there's incredible topics and uh, individuals that will be joining Miss Liz for tea again. So if you'd like to know more about tea time, check out www.misslizesteatime.com. Until then, keep serving your tea, keep being true, and we'll make a difference one cup of tea at a time. So take care and have a blessed day.